Hey everyone, Mr. Boultry here bringing you video 1.9 where we're going to be talking about the very introductions of circular motion. So we have a whole unit on circular motion in the future, but I kind of wanted to just preview that. Um, it's, it's going to be months away and I know this is going to be one of the units that you struggle with the most. So I wanted to start talking about it now so I can be asking you circular motion questions all year. So this is just going to be the very basic so I can start sprinkling sprinkling in questions into different units. Um, so first, we're just going to talk about the most basic case of circular motion, which is uniform circular motion. And we're going to introduce some basic terminology. And then I'm going to give you one formula that might be useful when we're doing circular motion problems. So first, let's look at something that is uh, experiencing uniform circular motion, by which I mean is moving with a constant speed around a circle. So the velocities are changing because the direction is changing, but the speed is constant. Um, so just sort of moving around in a circle. We're going to look at that one very specific example first. Um, so when we look at the object right here, the question is, well, what is the object's velocity when it is, boom, smack dab right there? If you were to draw a velocity arrow, how would you draw it? So a lot of people's first tendency with this is to draw the velocity arrow looking something like this, because, okay, we know it's moving in a circle, um, so we kind of want the velocity arrow to have a curve to it. Um, and then sort of like big picture, like, yes, it is going to move um, in a curve, but like I'm talking about like if this instant, ha a, a nanosecond later, what is its new position going to be? I'm sort of getting into that idea of calculus of, of making that velocity smaller and smaller and smaller at this instantaneous velocity was the velocity going to be. So then people say, well, if it has to get from here to eventually get over there, um, their next tendency is to have a velocity error that sort of looks like that so that it can get from point A to point B. Um, but then we would have sort of like a, like, like a hexagon looking shape. Um, so, so we actually need something that is, is moving. So from here, it needs to go right here next. So the actual truth of the matter is that the velocity vector is tangent to the circle and it's just always continuously changing. So it's tangent right now. And then once it moves to right here, then it gets to be tangent again and tangent again and tangent again. So it keeps just like a curving around because of that tangent velocity vector. Um, so here, I've just chosen two arbitrary points that are pretty close to each other. Um, and we see that the, tangent vec the, the velocity vector here is tangent to the curve, and the velocity vector here is tangent to the curve, which allows it to just continue to move all around in a circle like that. So then the question based on that is, well, if that is what the velocity vector is at this instant in this instant, what is the acceleration vector at these times? So let's think about, let's just, let's just add some arbitrary numbers to this um, and say if this is a velocity vector with unit, with unit length, length one, going entirely vertically. Um, and then this is now moving so, a little bit to the left and still vertically, but to keep the same speed, the same length of this velocity vector is going to be moving less vertically because now it's moving um, some to the left as well. So um, how, what acceleration did the object experience to get from the velocity at this point to the velocity at this point, sort of using our vector analysis? We can see that the velocity changed. Um, it went, it changed by negative um, 0 0.6 in the horizontal direction and negative 0 0.2 in the vertical direction. And you'll notice that this velocity vector is actually pointing to a particular place. I mean, excuse me, this is the acceleration vector, which is pointing to a particular place. And you'll notice that um, for a um, something experiencing uniform circular motion, the velocity vector is always tangent to the circle, and the uh, acceleration vector is always perpendicular to that, pointing towards the center of the circle. And that is what gives the object is circular motion. So that's just kind of the very basics of circular motion, the directions of things. Now, to continue on with the basics, let's talk about the basic terminology of some things and the basic symbology of some things. So arc length is just sort of the, the total linear distance um, travel, but it, the linear distance has now been like wrapped around a curve. So it, you can imagine arc length, which is measured in meters, is if, if you took a string and wrapped it around the distance that was traveled and then straightened out that string, sort of how much the total distance traveled was along that arc length. Um, and so as you're traveling that distance, you're going to be traveling through some sort of angle, which we're going to use the symbol theta for that, and it's measured in radians. 
Um, so then you're also going to have an, an angular velocity, which is different from the linear velocity. And this we are definitely going to talk about like way more um, in the unit that's specifically focused on rotation. I just kind of wanted to start sprinkling in the vocabulary now. Um, but it is the unit of that is omega. Um, and it's measured in radians per second. And angular acceleration, again, for the future, symbol is alpha, uh, which looks like a little fish. Um, and it's measured in radians per second squared. So we'll, we'll talk more about this in the future. Um, but the, the most important thing for, the, for right now is just to start thinking about how arc length um, and angle are related. So that's what we're going to think about in the next slide as we do one formula derivation. So this is kind of a crazy formula derivation but I don't just want to throw formulas at you that you have never understood why they come from or, or why they work or where they come from or why they work. Um, so I wanted to give you a little quick formula derivation for, um, so we talked about the direction of the acceleration is towards the center of the circle, but I also wanted to give you a formula to find the magnitude of the acceleration. Um, so to find this, I'm, I'm going to do a, a derivation that involves this diagram where we see we have a circle with some radius R, um, and then uh, we're looking at time one and time two, where we have velocity one and velocity two. And between those two times, we have experienced some change in position. Um, and then if we actually look at velocity one and velocity two, there is a change in velocity as well. So first, let's start with the definition of acceleration, which is change in velocity over change in time. And here we're, here's where things get like, whoa, how, how would you know to do that? And I know how to do it because I Googled it. Um, and whoever discovered it is, is probably just some like science math genius who figured this out. Um, but we're, we're just going to go with it and sort of we're along for the ride on this one, just to see where the formula came from for the magnitude of the acceleration, which is pointing towards the center of the circle. So uh, actually, since we know that this is tangent to the circle and the V1 is tangent to the circle and V2 is tangent to the circle, um, when you make this uh, shape, you can actually do some like really fancy math and show that this angle is the same as this angle, which gives us, uh, matter of fact, it gives us a similar triangle. So we have similar triangles here and here. The green triangle and the red triangle turn out to be similar. So we can use our similar triangle rules to say that delta V, the, the, the base of the triangle and one of the legs um, is, is uh, proportional to the um, delta P, again, the base of the triangle and one of the legs. So, and again, how would you know how to do this? We're just along for the ride. Um, because I have a delta V here, I'm gonna try to isolate the delta V, v over here. So I get delta P times the, the V, uh, either V1 or V2, since the, the magnitude is the same. Since it's moving with a constant speed, I don't really care divided by R. And then I'm going to take this and substitute it back into the acceleration formula. So delta P divided by the delta T stays there times V over R. And we know that change of position over change in time is just the velocity. So I get acceleration equals V times V over R. And this actually turns out that the formula for the magnitude of the acceleration for an object that is moving in a circle with a constant speed is V squared over R. And, and so the, the really important thing to remember here is that this is the formula, it works. Um, so if kind of the derivation went over your head a little bit, and that, that, that's fine. I just kind of didn't want to throw equations at you and you've never seen where they come from. Um, but it basically just came from uh, acceleration equals delta V over delta T and then using some um, similar triangle magic with the new sort of circular angular stuff that we have literally just introduced. Um, so this is the formula that you really want to write down and remember and use and be, be able to use. So this was just like the very basics, uh, the introduction to circular motion. We're going to continue sprinkling it in all year and, and kind of building up to the unit that is focused on circular motion. So let me know if you do have any questions. We're going to do some pretty basic practice problems with circular motion now, just so we can continue ramping up and ramping up and ramping up. This has been completely new. So uh, I understand if um, it hasn't sunk in yet, that I'm not really expecting it to have sunk in yet. But do just in the, the basics that I've introduced so far, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in our next class. Go Bears.